Good morning. I welcome you in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus. And this morning I would love to share with you from God's Word, from the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Let us hear the precious Word of God. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to, Jer to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, the man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Excuse me. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they had not found his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures and the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as, if, acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with him gathered together, excuse me, saying, The Lord has indeed risen and appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. May God bless to us the reading of his word. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray for the word. Almighty God, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the glory of your word. Oh, Father, we pray that just as you revealed yourself through your word to those two men on the road to Emmaus, so we pray that your word may be revealed to us this morning. And Father, may we be transformed by your word. And Father, we thank you for your word. May it bless and guide us this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The experience of the two men upon the road to Emmaus is powerful. Not only does it serve as one of the many post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, but it shows us how we can look to Scripture to see how God's plan has unfolded. In the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus Christ, we are taught that he appeared to Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, the eleven, and, and another five hundred witnesses, including in these are the two men walking on the road to Emmaus, Cleopas and another unnamed disciple. Cleopas and his companion were in great distress after they witnessed the crucifixion and death of Jesus, and they were pretty distraught that their rabbi and friend had died in such a horrendous way. As they were discussing all these happenings on their way home to Emmaus, they were joined by a stranger. 
It was Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him in Luke 24, verse 16. What may cause us not to recognize Jesus Christ as we journey on the road of faith? Firstly, there may be unconfessed sin that may be causing a barrier between us and God. Sin is described in the Bible as transgression of the law of God, 1 John 3 verse 4, and rebellion against God, Joshua 1 18 and Deuteronomy 9 verse 7. Secondly, there may be unforgiveness in our hearts towards those who have transgressed against us. In the Lord's Prayer, it says, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Thirdly, selfish ambition and wrong agendas can cause us not to recognize Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. In the time of Jesus, a number of his disciples and the people of the nation were expecting him to be the Messiah that would vanquish the Roman oppressors. Cleopas and his companion confessed to him in Luke chapter 24 verse 21, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. A nine-year-old Sunday school girl called or named Courtney said the disciples were looking for a Messiah who would overthrow the Roman oppressors. They didn't understand that the Messiah would conquer a much bigger enemy, dead itself or death itself. When we are too focused on our ambitions and agendas, we simply do not hear or see or understand the ways of God. Fortunately, our God is gracious through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He has a remedy for each of these barriers between him and us. In the first instance, God the Father calls us to confess our sins and repent from unconfessed sin. Repentance is not a matter of just making a 180 degree turn from doing wrong, but in the New Testament the word repentance is the Greek word metanoia, metanoia, which means that the process of repentance begins in our mind. We need to turn away from sin and this process begins in our mind. We need to completely work it out of our system. And therefore it is a process that we need to follow. In the second instance, forgiveness of others is a process too. Richard Foster in his book about prayer says that to forgive and forget is a process. The human being's brain is, is more powerful than a computer. And we cannot easily delete or erase the hurts that others have caused in our life. Nonetheless, forgiveness is a conscious process of deciding to forgive those who hurt us. Each time, we are each time we are reminded of what others have done to us, we need to remind ourselves that we have to continue to forgive them. As we do this over time, we are able to forgive and forget. In the third instance, we need to surrender ourselves completely into the hands of God. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 to 26, Jesus says, Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? Excuse me. I would agree that this is probably one of the most difficult actions to take, surrendering our lives completely and utterly into the hands of God. But it is when we are able to surrender ourselves to Him that He will be able to make powerful revelations in our life, especially through scriptures. On the road to Emmaus, Jesus gave a lesson on the prophecies of the Old Testament, of the Old Testament which were fulfilled in his death and resurrection. What a lesson that would have been. The author of the book explains his work, making connections from scripture to the events that had recently 
been experienced. The disciples' reaction to Jesus' lesson was one of deep conviction of the truth of what he was teaching. Were not our hearts burning within us while we talked, they had asked one another. Their physical eyes were blinded to the identity of Jesus, but their eyes of faith were being opened as Jesus opened the scriptures to them. Following this account, Jesus appears to his other disciples, removing all doubt that he was alive. Jesus had promised that he would show himself to those who love him in John chapter 14 verse 21. And this is exactly what he does on the road to Emmaus. The story of the disciples on the Emmaus road is important for many reasons. It provides an emphasis on the Old Testament prophecies related to Jesus, evidence regarding an additional appearance of Jesus and a connection regarding the many eyewitnesses of the resurrected Jesus. Luke 24 is often seen as a model of the journey that Jesus makes with many of us today. As he opens our eyes, points to the word and reveals himself for long life's walk as the, res as the resurrected Savior and Lord. Finally, the story of the walk to Emmaus teaches us that Jesus is our great physician and counselor in life. Yeah, were two disciples in a very distressed state, unable to think straight. First of all, Jesus asked questions. He got them to talk, established a relationship, and so made them receptive to what he had to say. His opening gambit drew from Cleopas only rudeness. People who are hurt often react in this way. But he persisted and they shared their trouble. In this way, healing was able to begin. Second, he explained the scripture, showing them that what he had, um, let me repeat that. Second, he explained the scripture, showing them that what had been puzzling them, the death of the one whom they thought would redeem them by ending the Roman occupation, had actually been prophesied centuries before as God's way of redeeming in the sense of ending the burden and bondage of sin. Finally, he revealed his presence. Stay with us, they had said to him on reaching Emmaus. In the deepest sense he did, even after they ceased to see him. What a blessing for them that they were given to hospitality, but they would have missed had they not been. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is still the great physician and counselor today. We shall receive his healing as we tell him our trouble let him minister to us from scripture and ask him to reassure us that as we go through what may feel like fire and flood he goes with us and will stay with us till the road ends therefore in conclusion as we share in holy communion this morning it is my prayer that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, may reveal himself to you. It reads, when he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Amen. Let us pray for this word. Oh, Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, may your word continue to speak to us as we ponder on these things. And Lord, may those things that obstruct us or blind us in a relationship with you, sin or unconfessed sin and unforgiveness, O oh, Father, we pray this morning too that you may forgive us for our agendas, that you may forgive us for our false and wrong agendas. Mm -hmm. And Father, indeed, may this morning be an experience of forgiveness and may this morning's word uh, teach us that you truly want to reveal more of yourself to us and so lord may your word speak to us may your word transform us and father may you guide us as we walk with you on this journey of faith we pray this lord in jesus name amen may god be with you may you experience his blessing this week and may he guide you in everything you do amen and goodbye